Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the eTrailer invisible base plate with removable arms on a 2022 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited. Your base plate is going to be one of five main components required for flat towing a vehicle. It also has the hookup points for some of the other components, so let's go through those. The first one is going to be the base plate, which attaches to the frame of the vehicle, creating a mounting point for your tow bar to attach. And your tow bar is going to go and attach to the removable arms that go on your base plate and become the connecting point between the towed vehicle and the hitch on the RV. Now you also have your safety chain loops here, and you're gonna run your safety cables just in case of an accidental disconnect, you're still going to be hooked into the hitch on the RV. Now, we also have our supplemental braking system, which is going to allow the vehicle to slow and stop when you apply the brakes on the RV. You also have a breakaway cable here that's going to attach to the hitch on the RV. So that way, if a catastrophic uh, you know, separation happens, it's going to pull that pin and put the brakes on the vehicle. And that way, it's not rolling down the highway. It's going to bring it to a stop. Now, your diode wiring is going to transmit your light sequence from your RV to the back of your towed vehicle, letting people know what you're going to accomplish. And a lot of times that diode wiring is going to tie into that braking system. Uh, we also added a charge line to ours and it all goes to this six pole. Then you're going to have your umbilical that goes to the seven way on your RV. Taking a closer look at our base plate, you can see that the only portion that you really see protruding is going to be our uh, removable arm portion with our safety chain loops kind of here. So a little bit of trimming required to allow that to fit, but overall it looks pretty cool on the Jeep. Um, and it, you know, it just adds a little toughness to the front. So it doesn't really take away from the look of the vehicle. It also uh, has a nice bracket that's included that uses the factory screws. Uh, it makes it really easy to get your six pole wiring all mounted up and that bracket's included. Now, when you are ready to hook up to your tow bar, pretty easy here. You're just gonna slide this in, rotate it, and then you can put your pin in place and you're ready to go. Now, this style of adapter arm here is going to work with e-trailer and Demco style tow bars, but not to worry, uh, just because you have the e-trailer base plate does not mean you can't get adapters to adapt to a Roadmaster style or any other style of tow bar. Now, overall, installation's pretty easy on this. Um, in fact, most of the Jeep base plates are pretty simple. Uh, you're gonna take your front bumper off and you're gonna utilize some of the factory hardware to get it mounted up, but there's no drilling or cutting except for your plastic that's required. And really, you can knock this out, I would say about hour and a half, two hours. Um, now, when getting your air dam back in place, it can get a little bit tight and you do have to bend some of the tabs. Uh, I also noticed that it is putting stress here a little bit, so it kind of rubs against that, but really overall, uh, it's not too bad and the finished product looks really good. Now our installation is gonna begin with removing two of the plastic push pins that we find here on the top between the bumper and the front grill. Now throughout the entire process, you do wanna have a nice organized place to keep all of your hardware because if you're setting up your base plate, chances are you're gonna to wanna to get the rest of your flat toe components in at the same time. And so this bumper may be off for a little bit and just to keep yourself organized and have that hardware to go back on, having it organized is going to make it that much easier. So we're going to see that it is in a recessed portion here and if you need to you can rotate this to be able to get a flathead screwdriver or a trim panel tool and you're just going to want to pry in where those slots are on the center portion and once you get that to kind of pry up a little bit it makes it a lot easier to get the rest of that plas plastic push pin out so just kind of work at it here and we should be able to get these pulled out with that center section up and then we'll set these aside. Now we're gonna head underneath our front bumper to our air dam here, and there's gonna be a series of plastic push pins. So you're gonna see that there is a cutout to be able to gain access to them. It's gonna be kind of an awkward angle here, but similar as the ones that we had up top, you're just gonna kind of pry on the center, and that should allow the whole push pin to kind of pop out. Now, if it does separate from the base, no worries, just grab that and then put those together so you have them for later, and then just follow along here to get the rest of those taken out. So now we're gonna go into these indents here and we're gonna find two eight millimeter screws. So we'll go ahead, get those removed. Now this should be able to come down and we're gonna set this aside. We are gonna be doing some trimming to this to allow our arms to go through. So keep it handy because we'll be using this shortly. Now on the back side of our bumper, we're gonna see the studs that go through 
and we're going to have uh, four on each side and there are going to be 18 millimeter nuts that we're going to remove so we'll go ahead and get those taken out. Now on our passenger side, we're going to go ahead and unplug our clip here. This is going to be for our fog lamps. So we'll be getting ready to pull our fascia off, but we want to make sure we don't have electrical connections holding it still attached. So we have a push button tab here. We'll just push on that and get this to separate. So now we'll pull our front bumper off and we are going to kind of shimmy it a little bit. Just kind of rock it side to side until we can get this to pop out. And then we'll just set this somewhere safe. That way it doesn't get scratched. So now on the outside of the frame rails, we're gonna remove the bolts. There's gonna be one on each side and it's gonna be a 16 millimeter. So we're just removing the outside bolts. There's also an inside bracket that looks about the same. We're gonna leave that on there. Now we're not gonna be using these um, during our installation of our base plate. So you can set those aside and uh, you can keep them for safekeeping or you can toss them, it's up to you. Now, even though we're not using our brackets, we are gonna reuse our bolts that we removed here, so keep those handy. Now, since we've removed that bracket to kind of fill that gap there, we're gonna be taking our washer and just to hold it in place, we're gonna just put, line it up with the hole and then with some painter's tape, I'm just gonna kind of tape this in place. That way that washer will stay there for us. And then you can just go ahead and take a, uh, anything to kind of poke through here and that way we have that all lined up and we'll be able to get our bumper beam back up. And we are gonna be doing this on both sides of the vehicle and it's just gonna be the outer side uh, that we're gonna be doing this to, but make sure you're doing the top and bottom. Now at this point, we're gonna take our base plate and get this lined up. So kind of from the bottom sliding up, we'll get this in place. Now it might get a little tight here, so you may have to kind of use a dead blow to knock this up, but have your bolts handy, the ones that we removed from here, because once we get this aligned, we're gonna be bolting it back up in place. Just be careful not to knock your washers loose here. Once we get that aligned, we're just gonna get these started. You don't have to tighten them down. In fact, you're gonna to wanna to leave them loose. So just enough to support our base, base plate here. Now we're going to bolt up our serrated flange bolt. Uh, and this is gonna pass through the hole here. There's a hexagonal shape and it's gonna pass through and bolt up to our little weld nut that we have here. Now it's shaped to where we can fit this up inside of the frame rail. There's an oval there and you're gonna to want to Kind of use your fingers to align it up with the hole. You should see the threads kind of slide up there and then pass your bolt through and get that started. You don't have to crank it down here and you may need to move the base plate just a little bit just to get it to all align. But again, just kind of get this started and then we can do that on both sides. Now included in our kit, we're gonna be mounting up our bracket for our six pole. This is also gonna be our mounting point for a breakaway cable uh, for our braking system. And it actually utilizes the factory screws here. So that's really nice to be able to get this mounted up. And I'm gonna go ahead and get this mounted now. And that way, when we get our air dam in place, we'll be able to determine where we need to drill to get our wires passed through for the rest of our installation of our flat toe components. So with a seven millimeter screw or a seven millimeter socket, we'll go ahead and get these removed. It looks as if you have two different spots to where you can potentially mount it. I'm gonna have it a little bit further forward. It makes it a little bit easier to plug in. And also we might be able to utilize these for our breakaway switch. So we'll just get this mounted back up. Before 
far as cutting out our air dam to get our arms to be able to pop through, they do give us a nice template here. And you'll see the center line, it's marked passenger and driver's side. You're gonna want to use this kind of bump out here to be right at the bottom of the embossing and centered up on it. And I've just gone ahead and taped this in place and I'm gonna drill out these uh, four markings here and that way we'll get a nice clean cut and have a nice opening, not be too large. So go, go ahead and drill out all your templates on both sides. Now I've gone ahead and taken our templates off and then just using painter's tape, this is gonna allow us to make sure that we follow a nice straight line while cutting this out. And as far as cutting tools, you can use a Dremel. Uh, I use a multi-tool that's got an oscillating cutting blade just to kind of get a nice straight line, but whatever works best, go ahead and get it cut out. Once we get this cut out, you can run a file or even the back edge of a knife blade just to kind of get some of these burrs taken off. Once you're happy with it, you can go ahead and repeat on the other side. Now you are gonna to want to test fit to make sure that it's gonna fit. And as I kind of align, we have the center tab here, just kind of center that up. And I can see already, we are a little bit tight here, just where our safety chain loop attachments are. Not by much, I think if I notch off maybe quarter of an inch on each side, that should get us there. But make sure you're doing that before you get everything mounted up. And that way it'll be ready to go on with the bumper. And before we get our bumper put on, we're gonna go ahead and get our safety cables attached. Now this is just gonna create an, an additional safety just in case uh, these bolts fail for whatever reason. We're gonna have these safety cables that wrap around the base plate and attach to the frame. Now there's a bunch of different ways to do this. The main thing that you're gonna wanna do is just make sure that it's uh, holding around the base plate and attaching securely to the frame. So uh, again, if this fails, you at least have something holding on there. So we have a spot here that's nice and open that's attached to our bumper beam. I just loop this around our base plate and then with our uh, quick link here, we'll just go ahead, loop both of them through and attach it to this. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side as well. Now, if you're having trouble trying to get your bumper slid all the way back on and it's not going, uh, it is tricky to get all these lined up. And I actually kind of uh, open these up a little bit with a drill bit uh, and a burr bit just to kind of open it to make it a little bit easier. Something you're also gonna wanna check is obviously make sure that your washers are properly aligned for those to go through. So if you need to, you can kind of set those up with a screwdriver and kind of make sure they're in place. Now, once we kind of get these aligned and we get our studs passed through, we can go ahead and loosely put our nuts back on the bumper uh, studs and that way we can hold the bumper up and then we can start tightening down the rest of our hardware. And you might need to pry on the base plate a little bit just to kind of get that to align as well. Now, before we secure it down, we're gonna go ahead and use those nuts that we had before, but using the included Loctite, I'm gonna just put a little dab here before tightening these down and that's just gonna ensure that long-term these aren't gonna back off. The same thing is gonna go for our hardware that we put in place here. So before we tighten those down, just drop a little bit of Loctite in there. Um, and that way, again, it's just gonna make sure that it's gonna hold those in place. So this comes in the kit and it's a nice little added benefit. Normally uh, some other kits will recommend it and they don't include it. So you don't have to get too crazy. Just kind of make sure that some of the threads are coated there. And as you tighten, it'll kind of disperse it around. Um, so go ahead and do that for all eight of these nuts. And also when putting the nuts in on the passenger side, it's a good time to get that electrical connection uh, for your fog lamps put back in place. So now we're gonna come back and tighten down our nuts here on our bumper beam. Uh, and then we're gonna come back with our torque wrench using the torque settings found in the instruction manual to torque these down properly. Now we'll just go through and torque down the rest of the hardware. 
Now you might notice that your eight millimeter screws aren't lining up with the tabs here um, to the bottom of the air dam, and that's gonna be kind of normal. So we may need to bend these down. Um, I'm gonna use my hand. I can kind of just press this and push up on the air dam until this lines up. You can also use a set of channel locks or pliers to bend that into place. Go ahead and do that on the other side as well. And then our last step is uh, drilling a hole here through this air dam, and that's gonna allow us to pass our wiring through. So your six bolt's gonna live here, and it does stick out a decent amount. So really just going straight back, looks like it puts us right at this ridge here. So I'm just gonna put a little pilot bit uh, and then enlarge this. Uh, really, um, only about a little larger than half inch should be enough. Um, a lot of times you'll have wire loom, so just enlarge that out, and that way you can get not only your breakaway switch, but your six pole diode wiring pass through here. So with that hole drilled through, we're really ready to set up the rest of our components. And this is one of the rare vehicles that you really wanna keep the, uh, or you can actually get the fascia mounted up. A lot of times you keep it off to run the wires, but this one, you can pretty much pass everything through here and the rest of it should be pretty easy to get your wires ran. So you can go ahead and get the rest of your components on and start enjoying your base plate. And that was a look and installation of the e-trailer invisible base plate with removable arms on a 2022 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited.